What's up, VC? Okay, if you watched my last two videos, um, you know that I just got back from Michigan. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I usually um, come back with records that I've bought uh, throughout the year online. I think I've done that the past two years, and this year is no different. Um, if you've watched my last two videos, you know that I've bought a lot of records recently making filming these videos back to back all on the same day and no i have not listened to all these but i haven't made a video in months and that's because it's hard to find the time often to to make videos um in the summer it's hard because there's a lot going on and it's busy you want to be outside also don't listen to as many records in the uh, in the summer and then, especially the summer we're having where it hasn't rained at all, today is actually a rainy day, which is why I'm doing this, because often um, it's been nice all summer and I just don't want to sit inside all day. So, and then in the winter I find it hard to make videos because it gets dark so early. Anyway, here I am, I'm just ripping these all out. I'll probably post them, you know, not all at the same time. So this one will probably come out a bit later, which is now, if you're watching it. So this for me was, you know, I was looking forward to this. It's probably the best haul I've had because obviously this is a thing to, I mean, there's, I think it's a third year, but there's obviously my, my knowledge and my tastes have grown. So it's probably the best haul for me in terms of, you know, it's to see all these records in one place is, was pretty amazing when I got to my cousins and I was just going through what I had bought over the past year. And, uh, yeah, it's, you know, I'm really excited to listen to some of these records, all of these records. I've listened to some of them so far. Um, I started cleaning them up, putting them in sleeves. Um, cause yeah, these are all, uh, good records for the most part. I'm sure some of them maybe won't be what I expected and I might be a little disappointed with. Um, but that's okay. That's part of the game, right? Uh, not every record is going to be our favorite record. So these are in no particular order, mixed all over the place here. Muse Records, another label that I collect. Obviously I don't buy everything on the label, but I have a lot on Muse on my shelf. All the Muse Records are together. Um, there's definitely a bunch of Muse Records that I want that I'm still missing. There's a lot that I don't have that I don't want. Um, I wish they were all good, because um, it would be cool. To, I like, you know, collecting complete labels, but there's not many that I want to do that for. Anyway, this is Kenny Barron, Sunset to Dawn. Um, love this cover. Um, I think this was, the reason I got this was Andrew, um, Champ Sound on, formerly Champ Sound, I guess. You're still there. I think you still have some videos up, Andrew. Um, Andrew Bleeds on Instagram. You, This was a recommendation of yours. Um, so, thank you. Don't even know where to put these. Chris Cole recommendation. Rise Vision coming. This is Haki R. Madubuti. Not sure how to say that. Don L. Lee. Nash Nation. African Liberation Art Ensemble. So, last year, I came back with Madasi. And because, you know, through the VC, it was posted that there was some sealed originals available and then I think Chris Cole hit me up with this an auction of this that was not too expensive so I grabbed a copy I really really enjoyed Madassi from what I've heard I don't know that I've I'm gonna enjoy this one as much but I don't know could be wrong and when I say heard I mean through people talking I haven't actually heard this I might have sampled a little bit online but I love this cover so happy to add this to the collection I'm really looking forward to getting in to the music I believe there's a bit more kind of spoken word on that one, but I'm not sure. Soul Translation. Donald Alexander Strachan um, and the Freedom Ensemble. Really, really excited about this one. This was a friend of mine kind of told me about this one. Um, I think it was, it was, re it was reissued um, last year or this year even, I'm not sure. Um, this is on Triad Concept Music. That's what the label looks like. Um, I'm not sure where this is from. I would almost want to say it could be from Detroit, but I'm just saying that. I don't think it is. Let's see. 
here. Doesn't say. Oh, Connecticut. Or it was recorded in Connecticut. Wallingford, Connecticut. There you go. So some it's called Soul Translation, a spiritual suite. So yeah. I did listen to one side of this the other night and I really, really enjoyed it. And that one's in good shape. Um Bill Lewis Conjamal. Uh, the River, a vibraphone and marimba duet. So this is a record that popped up uh, at my local store when a local uh, when they bought a huge collection a few years ago, um, and I didn't buy it because it was quite expensive, and so I always kind of wanted it uh, since then. But I found a much more affordable coffee copy, as in half the price, um, in good shape. Everything's in great shape except for this little tear here. But this is on Philly Jazz, so. I think the only Philly Jazz record I missed... Are there only four records on Philly Jazz? I think I got three of them now, and the one I'm missing is um, the Sun Ra Lanquidity. Um, and they actually did have a copy of that when that collection came in, and I think it probably all the Philly Jazz records I have were from that collection. kind of regret not getting the Sun Ra, but it's a little bit out of my price range. And... Uh... What else was I gonna say? Don't remember now. This, I didn't really know the music. I don't know why it was on my want list, but I pulled the trigger on it shortly before heading out um, on the trip. And I really, really enjoyed this. Um, this is Eric Hochberg um, and Andy Potter, World Thing. I don't know how this got on my want list, who recommended it, who posted it, um, but all I can say is thank you. I thought it was gonna be more soul, but I don't, I don't know where I had that, you know, expectation, but it was more, uh, definitely more jazzy than what I thought it was going to be. But that's because I knew nothing about it. Um, this is on Hopo Records, so I highly recommend this one. Check it out. I don't know if there's any clips online or not. It's from 76. This one I bought off Chris Cole. Um, Michael Stewart is, you know, a name that's been bouncing around the VC a lot recently with, um, The Blessing being sold, um, Deadstock of The Blessing, a lot of you have picked that up. This is Determination, so this is from the late 70s versus The Blessing, which is late 80s. Um, this is not even on a label, uh, I don't believe it's recorded in Toronto. Um, so yeah, it's the Michael Stewart, Keith Blackley Quartet, Determination. I am looking forward to listening to this because I know Chris, you you um, have told me that this is a really good record, which is why I bought it off you. So thank you. I got some more actually from Chris uh, from his the store. I guess I don't know if you still work there, Chris, but you're working, I believe, at Record Wonderland. I think is the store. Um, so these aren't all together, but this is one of the ones I picked up. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. Based on, I mean, I know he played on the. Um, the Faro record on Indian Navigation that I don't have. But this one is another Indian Navigation for the collection. This is Rendezvous with Now. Um, and I have a feeling, based on what I read of the um, the uh, the liner notes here, it got me really excited to listen to, to the album. And it's with Cecil McBee on bass, Bernie Sinen Sinensky on piano, who I have records on PM Records as well as RCI, the Canadian label, and Claude Ranger, who I don't know, but it's a, a Quebecois name, so I'm actually curious to to see um, to find out more about him. But I'm really excited because I have a feeling that I'm going to really like this record. That it's going to be on the spiritual tip, even though it's a guitar record. Um, this is the one that I listened to that I was disappointed with. I bought this because I was buying another record off the guy and he had it um, for sale and it was a very good price. It's on Black Fire. Um, so I thought I didn't have anything on Black Fire. I thought that was cool. But there was a little bit, but this is, I thought it was going to be more of a, I guess, more spiritual, but I wasn't really digging um, the vocals on this. This is one of the few out of this stack that I've actually listened to. And yeah, I was disappointed with it. 
but the cover is awesome. It This is not meant to be there. It looks like, I guess, someone, when they, I don't know if it came out of a package and they sliced it, but yeah, there's that scratch along, which doesn't really bother me much, but the cover is really, really cool. So I don't know if I'll keep this one or what I'll do. One day I might pass this on, but it was not really my thing. Couple Strata East, so haven't been, you know, buying much Strata East because it's really, really expensive. But I did get these two throughout the year. Um, not the, kind of like the last of the affordable ones for me, I think. There's a, maybe a couple more affordable ones, some of the later ones I don't have, but the rest are all, the ones I'm missing are all, you know, the hundreds of dollar ones that... I have bought reissues of some, the ones that have been, but this is Clifford Jordan Quartet Glass Bead Games. Um, great price for this record. There is a little bit of like a, a seam split on the bottom, but from what I heard, I listened to one of the discs and it sounded great. There's obviously some foxing, some ring wear, but that doesn't bother me. Really, really happy to, to have this uh, Clifford Jordan record in my collection. This is Charles Rouse. I've heard great things about this, obviously, of Thelonious Monk fame. Excuse me a second. Um, two is one. This is his, uh, is this his first record as a leader? Potentially. I have another one of Charles Rouse's records from later on, and it's not as funky as this one. It's probably more, it's more straight, but it's really enjoyable as well. And this is a, just an awesome cover. So yeah, two more Strata East for the collection. This record, I regret because now there's a copy for the same price on Discogs as I paid, but it's, I think, was a sealed copy. Um, and this one, unfortunately, has some issues. One of the tracks, there's a whole bunch of marks over and it sounds not great. I posted this on Instagram the other day. Um, this is Abdullah Life's Force, and it's so good that I'm almost tempted to buy another copy. Um, either that one or if I see it, but yeah, I need to... This is... I really, really enjoyed this record. Um, he played with Sun Ra, and this is on About Time Records, which I remember um, Seco Funk making a video about that label. But this, I'd highly recommend this record. It's not... If you're not into free jazz... It's a very accessible record. It's not crazy or anything. It's just kind of very deep and spiritual. Um, yeah, just check it out. That's all I can say about that one. Life's Force. Um, what else? This I bought off a VC member. I don't... This is Henry Franklin, Tribal Dance. I didn't have any Henry Franklin, Franklin records. Obviously, his records on Black Jazz are very famous. Um, known as The Skipper and I don't have either of those in my collection so maybe one day but this is on catalyst this is what came out after those two tribal dance and i haven't heard this yet but i'm really looking forward to to giving this a listen because i just you know i've heard so many good things about henry franklin and i'm a big um big bass fan so this cover is awesome as well where are we these are the last two that I bought right before going kind of impulse purchases. Um, you can see where I got them. So this is Farouk Zibe with Northwoods Improvisers. I'm not sure how you say that, Infa. Um, I don't know what the first pressing of this was, but this one's green. Anyway, this is on Cubico, um, which also um, Seco Funk fan, you made a video about. This is my second um, Farouk Zibe record. First one I absolutely love, so I can only assume that I'm going to be a big fan of this one as well. And another record I knew nothing about, but kind of came across on Discogs and was um, took a chance on. And this is Deep Stream. Uh, by Dawan Muhammad. That's, uh, I guess, some form of private press. Evident, evidence Artistic Records, um, 1979. This is a, a sealed copy. So, 
I have a good feeling about that one from the little snippets that I heard online. This is another one of the ones from uh, Record Wonderland that Chris was kind enough to ship to me. Um, a New Perspective, Donald Byrd, Band and Voices. Heard some people say really good things about this record. I know it's not everyone's thing because of the um, the vocals, but uh, Donald Byrd, Hank Mobley, Donald Best on Vibes, who I've never heard of, Kenny Burrell on guitar, Herbie Hancock, Butch Warren, and Lex Humphreys. Um, arrangements by Duke Pearson. This is an original mono pressing with um, all the... Uh, Yeah, with, with the ear and everything. The Plastilite P, as it's called, not really an ear. Dom Um Romeo, Spirit of the Times, another one on Muse. Someone's yelling outside, chanting. I don't know what that noise is, if you guys heard it. From 1975, uh, Lloyd McNeil on here. Dom Salvador, Joe Beck, those are the, the musicians I recognize, but yeah, so looking forward to that, basically looking forward to all these, as I keep saying, I keep repeating myself, as I haven't listened to them. Ninth Creation, Falling in Love, another Seco Funk uh, recommendation, I remember, I think this was in your like Funk Top 10. Um, or not top 10, but tens. So this is, is the second pressing of this. The first pressing um, I found out is a different cover completely, but I like this cover. And um, I have a, I know that I'm gonna love this record. Um, not something I would have ever found or unlikely to have ever found here in Montreal. And it, this pressing is not expensive. So probably wanna get yourself a copy. So Nimbus. West is a label also that I'm kind of collecting. Same like uh, Strata East, there's, you know, some of the more expensive, there's less of them on Nimbus, but there's some really expensive pieces that I don't know if I'll ever get my hands on, like the Nate Morgan and the Adele Sebastian. But in the meantime, I've been picking up slowly the, the more affordable ones and every record that I have on Nimbus, I, I really enjoy. The ones that are were really cheap that I don't know anything about, but I took a chance on and are these Curtis Clark records, Amsterdam Sunshine and um, Deep Sea Diver. So I know nothing about these, but I was willing to take the chance for a few bucks and add to my Nimbus collection. Um, the ones I'm, excited, really excited to, to check out are these uh, Roberto Miguel Miranda um, ones, the creator's musician, as well as Raphael. These are both sealed. All the, all the records I bought on Nimbus are either sealed or just, you know, have been open but not really played. Um, and Thomas Tedesco and Ocean featuring Bobby Bradford and Miguel Miranda as well. Onahe. These are all from uh, from the 80s, I would say. So yeah, adding to the Nimbus collection. What else do I got here? This was a Chris Cole recommendation that had been sitting in my want list for a long time. And it's a cheap record, so yeah. Gave it a shot because I was buying, I don't know what record, but it was, uh, you know, when you're buying a record or you're looking at a record for sale on Discogs and it's like, has three other items you want. So, you know, I, for, I don't usually buy the, I'm not gonna buy the, the records for three, four or five dollars on their own because the, when the shipping costs as much of the record, it's a little silly. But when it's an add-on to something else you're buying, that's when you pull the trigger. This is from 84 on Stash Records. Know nothing about this, Chris, but I trust you, so I'm sure it's gonna be good. One of my favorite albums of all time that I just decided to get on vinyl. I have the CD, I've listened to it probably a hundred times, if not more. This is Raphael Sadiq Instant Vintage, so this is completely different than all these records I'm showing. And I actually know this record, I think this is a masterpiece. And 
One of my favorite tracks on this actually, what I just realized the other day or thought of is that one of my favorite tracks that I think I only kind of discovered a few years ago after, you know, revisiting the album after a few years is the bonus track on here is incredible. But it's, you know how they would do bonus tracks back in the day on CDs where it would be the last song would end and then there would be a lot of dead space for a few minutes and then the bonus track. So I'm assuming that the record is not going to have that song. Um, but I have it on CD. Um, anyway, this, if you don't know this record, the CD look, the cover looks like this. This is a, a promo copy um, of the record. I think they're... You can get a copy for pretty cheap um, online, but I highly recommend this if you're, you know, up there for me with um, with the likes of D'Angelo um, classic records, um, one of my favorite uh, modern soul records, probably the one that I've listened to the most. Ruby Rushton, this is a new re release from uh, from the UK on the label 22A, so I've spoken about this before. Um, I grabbed their, f I got their first record as a gift a few years ago. I don't know what the deal is with this cover, so there's two volumes of this. I showed, I think, the second volume, which I picked up on my UK trip. Um, the cover looks the same as volume two, but it's just weird cover. I, I don't know what the deal is, and the f it's interesting because their first re record, um, Two for Joy has like one of the coolest covers I've seen on a modern jazz, jazz album. And then there's just this weird one. I guess that's Trudy. But um, yeah, this is kind of part of that uh, whole UK scene. I don't know if you know anything about 22A, but I definitely recommend you check it out. Carlos Garnett, Journey to Enlightenment, another one on Muse. This, I think, is what people consider his best. And... Uh, record so I'm this is I think my third record by him and I really enjoy the other ones um, so I'm sure that this one is going to be much appreciated by me and I love this kind of cover as well I think that's his first record if I'm not mistaken this is actually one I bought uh, from Encore but through their discogs this is, I'm assuming, going to be a very heavy and free record. I'm hoping it's still, like, spacious and accessible. Um, it's on Ibidon Records, which I'm assuming is some form of, you know, small private press label. Awesome cover. This one has some issues, some taped, uh, taped seams kind of all around. But other than that, it still looks really nice. I feel like I have another record on this label, but I can't. I'll have to look it up to see if I do or not I don't know what else there is on that label but I do have another John Carter record I think it's on is it on Black Saint which I really enjoy the octet one Dawi I think it's called but this is just I don't know if you can see like that cover is he's just there in the corner and it's called Echoes from Rudolph slowly building up the Black Jazz collection the second coming Rudolph Johnson, that I have both his records now on Black Jazz. Um, this is one of the jazz records. This, um, unfortunately, this has some cover damage, but uh, one of the jazz records when I was buying jazz CDs um, early on in my, uh, uh, what do you want to call it, journey into jazz. This is one that I really, really dug. Um, Right On Brother, and this is from the late 60s, really funky, with Bernard Purdy on drums, Charles Ehrlin on organ, Rusty Bryant on sax. Um, Alice Coltrane with strings. Looking forward to getting uh, into this. I do know the track. Um, I've heard the version of A Love Supreme on this. I don't think I've heard the other ones. There's My Favorite Things, uh, Galaxy, and Sachi Dananda. Interesting cover on this one. But I, um, I think now I'm only missing 
um, the Huntington or whatever it's called, Ashram one, the black cover, and Transcendence to complete my Alice Coltrane collection, one of my favorite artists. Max Roach, Quartet, The Lodestar on Horo Records. I really want the Nomo as well, which I don't have, but this has um, one of my favorite artists, as you all know if you've watched my channel, Billy Harper, um, as well as Cecil Bridgewater and Reggie Workman. So I know this is going to be kind of very special to me and blow my mind because anything with Billy Harper is most excellent. I've wanted this since last summer when the local store had a copy and I was hesitating to pull the trigger because it was expensive and then all the copies I've seen since, since then have been a lot more expensive and uh, the local one sold and this is, you know, I got it for what I thought was a really good price. This is Pete Jolly Season, this is a promo copy. Um, so yeah, some nice electric keys on this. Um, discovered this next record when uh, two, two of the guys that work at the local store came over to my place for, for a listening session and one of the guys brought this over and it absolutely blew me away. Um, so I've kind of wanted it ever since then and uh, just missed out on a copy that Chris Cole was selling um, on Instagram but I was happy to shortly after that find one for a good price. And this is actually a steeplechase original of um, When Destiny Calls, the music of Billy Galt. So yeah, this, this is a special record, um, spiritual kind of feeling. Um, who else plays on here? I haven't looked at this yet. Michael Carvin, who he's showing up a lot. Jolie Wilson on vocals, Billy Saxton, Billy Skinner. So yeah, Billy Galt's a, a pianist. Sunny's Dream, Birth of the New Cool, the Sunny Chris Orchestra. I don't know why what why this was on my wand list. I guess someone had told me about it, but I've, I have a feeling it's gonna be better than what I would have expected. Um, oh yeah, that's it. Arranged and conducted by Horace Tapscott. That was what I thought was cool on this one, and I have not heard this at all. This, I don't remember who put me on to this, and I don't know what this is gonna sound like at all, but this is Funk Night Records. And I guess someone posted something about this on Instagram. I believe it's from Detroit, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so this is en route. And yeah, I don't know anything about it. But uh, this was from 2007. Oh yeah, manufactured in Detroit. But I'm looking forward to checking this out. I also got a couple 45s from, uh, from that label that they were selling. So yeah. If you guys don't know it, might be interested to check out Funk Night Records. Um, they got some cool stuff. So that's it. That's uh, my year's worth of buying records and probably enough to last me through the next year. I'm lying to you. There's one more here. Meditation Singers on Checker Records, The Bad Apple, some uh, kind of gospel soul. But uh, who po this was uh, Aki from Cosmos posted this um, on his Instagram. He had it in the shop. Also arranged by Charles Stepney. So yeah, this is, this is dope. So yeah, I'll uh, be kind of holding up and listening to these records for the next little bit. I got one more video to make, which is the little stack I have of records from the local finds since my last video, you know, the past few months months um what i bought in montreal but yeah peace everyone enjoy the rest of summer